Okay, hi, my name is Sumaya. Thank you all for coming. The title of my presentation is The Virtue of Temperance and the Vice of Overindulgence, a case study of perceptions in Muslim households in Cape Town. Overindulgence is widely regarded as a serious social problem in South Africa, leading to obesity and associated medical and psychological conditions. Recent studies indicate that nearly 75% of South Africans are overweight and four in every 10 are clinically obese. The country ranks the seventh fattest nation in the world. This epidemic affects the population as a whole, including the Muslim community, which will be our focus in this study. There is a lack of data of how serious it is amongst South African Muslims, given that they are a minority. Nonetheless, research done in Muslim populated countries indicate a strong presence of the obesity epidemic. These studies show that mindless eating in Muslim communities has increased rapidly. According to a study done by the Review Gazette, six Muslim countries made it, made it to the top 10 fattest countries with Kuwait and Saudi Arabia in the lead. In the Muslim tradition, Overindulgence is regarded as a vice which is contrasted with the virtue of temperance in the Quran, Hadith, and virtue ethics. Even though the virtue of temperance is praised and the vice of overindulgence is frowned upon in Muslim communities, this does preclude overindulgence amongst Muslims, not even in the month of the holy, in the month of Ramadan. This may be understood in terms of the classic problem of moral formation, where it is recognized virtue cannot be taught. Knowledge of the good does not suffice for the realization of the good. Lead to what's known of the perceptions of ordinary Muslims regarding why Muslims overindulge, even in the holy month of Ramadan, or amidst contexts of food insecurity, even though they acknowledge the virtue of moderation. The objective of the study is to investigate what perceptions may be found in Muslim households linked to the Rylands and Belhar mosques regarding the considerations that play a role in Muslims who overindulge, even though they affirm the virtue of moderation. To investigate why some Muslims overindulge against a particular social, economic, and religious context, namely the role of overindulgence as part of the nexus of problems related to food insecurity in South Africa and an understanding of the virtue of moderation and the vice of overindulgence in Muslim virtue ethics. The Muslim community of Belha are distinctive from the inhabitants of Rylands in terms of socioeconomic status as well as race. The Belha community is largely of Malay origin and is disadvantaged economically compared to their counterparts who are predominantly of Indian descent and enjoy a high income status. The research questions include, what are the perceptions of Muslims of moral standing with regard to overindulgence? How can moral formation be implemented? What are the constraints that hinder the proper implementation of moral formation and exercising restraint in eating? The study used a qualitative approach where semi-structured interviews were conducted with around 10 households with each of these mosques. The local imam in each case was asked to select 10 such households of good moral standing. These interviews were recorded and analyzed in order to describe the perceptions amongst Muslims of good moral standing with regards to the considerations that play a role in habits of overindulgence. Determinants of overindulgence within the selected Muslim households associated with the Rylands and Belha mosques. Spiritual apathy regarding this term, a strong sentiment that emerged from the various narratives of both communities was their implicit and explicit references to the presence of a spiritual vacuum as the main reason for gluttony. The majority of respondents explained that the presence of spiritual emptiness amongst Muslims 
played a significant role in promoting overindulgence. They explained that there is a resemblance in those who are well-versed in the understanding of their religion contrasted to those who are ill-informed. One participant explained they are spiritually starved and seek fulfillment in food. In the process, they become clinically obese. The perceptions of the participants concur with Islamic literature, which has extensively looked into this issue of overindulgence and its spiritual implications. Umar bin Khattab, the second caliph, beautifully stated, oh people, beware of overeating, because it makes you lazy in your prayer. It makes your body weak and makes you unhealthy. And Allah dislikes the obese man. Another theme that emerged in both communities was hedonistic consumption. Participants reported that pleasure seeking in food plays a significant role in overindulgence. They revealed that Muslims are self-indulgent to a point where they overindulge in social gatherings, such as weddings, funerals, or a get-together dinner for pleasure, and that such individuals will always find a reason to overeat and serve themselves, even if they're not hungry. Historically, Muslims followed the humble eating habits of the Prophet Muhammad to survive. Until modern times, overindulgence of food for pleasure has become widespread. This phenomenon has been defined as hedonic hunger. This refers to the desire to consume for pleasure, while a person who thinks a lot about eating in the absence of hunger is said to be in a state of pleasure-based hunger. For example, desiring and eating dessert after a satiating dinner represents a typical example of food intake driven by pleasure and not by hunger. And so subjects find it indispensable to still desire and eat even though there is no any need for, crit for caloric intake. This is because such foods are extremely rewarding and highly pleasurable. Conspicuous consumption was another theme that emerged in both communities. Food is used as a tool to flaunt privilege by displaying the most exotic foods and exquisite desserts during festivals such as weddings, parties, iftar in Ramadan, and also in funerals. These are the ideal events to flaunt status and bring the best food to signal social class. Those who cannot afford would result in getting into debt. And this was seen in the Belha community, which is of a low social economic background. Therefore, conspicuous consumption is a means to gain and signal status, which results in extravagance, wastage, rivalry, and a moral decline. It is logical to suggest that a society with such habits generates a spiral of social desires and is characterized by wasted time and money, and especially undermines the formation of virtue ethics. Such habits undermine the four cardinal virtues of wisdom, justice, courage, and especially temperance. Historically, conspicuous consumption was a practice exclusive to the rich, the aristocratic class. However, in modern times, it was found that although wealthy individuals engaged in conspicuous habits, the poor and the newly rich were more susceptible to these behaviors as there was a desire to impress and signal status to others. The poor spend a larger fraction of their wealth on temptation goods and that this can generate a poverty trap. Another thing that emerged was social environmental cues. Respondents of both communities explained that social environmental factors have a big influence on overindulgence, such that the foods, process, such that fast foods, processed foods, the influence of eating patterns, varieties, packaging, portion sizes, and the advertisement of such foods tend to be strong, salient, and tempting, and hence undermines moderation in food consumption. Ramadan. A month of restraint, self-reflection, devotion, and worship has been turned into a month of indulgence and unhealthy eating, which results in Muslims gaining weight. This theme was also seen in both communities. It's also perceived to be the busiest time of the year in the kitchen, as a majority of Muslims spend long hours in the kitchen, making extra special bountiful meals, and as a result, spend four to five hours in the kitchen and then feast all night. The study showed that 
those in the food industry reported Ramadan to be the best month of the year, but also admitted that it was hard to keep up with orders. It was explained that the majority of Muslims stocked up on food in the days leading to Ramadan. It was explained that most Muslims squeeze a five-course meal in the few hours they can eat. The research further explained that these individuals are very meticulous of what type of food they consume when breaking their fast and would prefer oily, fried foods to healthy food. This causes weight gain, health complications, and sluggishness, which stands in the way of worship. These persons cannot perform tarawih, even in prayers, as they overstuff themselves. It was advised that those who cannot do without fatty foods should not eat daily and limit the amount as well as eat more fruit and vegetables. Clearly, in present times, Ramadan may renew the spirit, but often does lead you to trim the waistline. Most importantly, these habits clearly contradict the teachings of Islam in which the Prophet, peace be upon him, evidently broke his fast with only water and dates, performed the lengthy prayers special to the month and only ate a light meal for supper. Mindless eating in relation to food insecurity was a theme exclusive to the community in Belha. Food insecurity disrupts eating patterns caused by a cycle of fluctuating availability. As resources dwindle, individuals eat decreasing amounts of food and when food is more available, they compensate by overeating energy-dense and plateable foods. On why food insecure individuals eat what they do, the reliance on inexpensive processed and highly plateable foods and the availability of resources, followed by a restriction of caloric intake, represents dietary restraint, which is linked with binge eating and weight gain. The above findings also suggest that such individuals would opt for cheap energy dense foods to serve on many received from low paying jobs and social grants so as not to run out of food before their next pay. With regards to the implementation, with regards to the implementation of moral formation, the study revealed self-discipline leading by example, as well as parents, educators, and leaders playing an active role to be key in the formation of good morals. Additionally, the study found good moral formation can be achieved through habituation. The major constraints to, moder to moderate and healthy eating is a lack of self-discipline, the absence of virtue, ethical education, Islamic institutions, and finally, Muslim leaders have prioritized the halal aspect of food and in the interim have forgotten to preach the importance of self-discipline. In conclusion, the literature, in conclusion, the literature review and empirical research have revealed that most of Muslim societies are oblivious of the virtue of temperance. The vice of overindulgence has intensified the triple burden of hunger playing a major role in food insecurity and spiritual apathy. This assessment concludes that faith, ethics and philosophy in society extends to food security. In conclusion, all faith groups and ethicists should be at the forefront in spearheading the importance of following religious guidelines with regards to food consumption as religion plays a significant role in food security. Thank you, that's all from me.